Okay. So art initiation now actually gets quite simple because our, our, our guidelines have become really easy. Obviously, everybody that's over 30 kilograms, note the weight has dropped over 10 years of age, gets TLD, very nice. Obviously, we know it's safe in women of childbearing age now. If an old children is under 10 years old and more than three or four weeks, they get a back of a 3DC Dolly Tegover. Wonderful. Pinava Ratonava, no more in the mix. Dolly Tegover, we've got some lovely preparations. Um, in the South African Clinician Society, they do have that lower dose efavirenz combination possibility. They also have got rolpivirine, and these are all patients that can't have Dolly Tegover for some reason. And they've got TAF instead of tenofovir if the EGFR is between 30 and, and 50. Um, and there is a dolichegovir lamivudine combination that's being trialed, and the guideline just makes clear they use them in Botswana and places like that, um, but um, not for our setting. So you might sometimes see people like coming with those kinds of regimens over the borders, just put them on TLD. So we now have new terminology um, where we talk about TLD1 and ALD1, and the A here referring obviously to a back of it. So this is somebody who's never failed a regimen. So it's people you're either starting for the first time today, or maybe they were on TEE first line and I've switched them to TLD and then that will be called that TLD1. But now you might have patients who was on a, a second line regimen. Maybe they were on AZD, 3 tc Lupinova, Ratonova. Now I've changed them to TLD, but they have failed a regimen in the past. And so those regimens we're going to call TLD2. It's exactly the same tablet, but it helps keep us track in our notes whether we're dealing with a first line patient or a second line patient. So back of a 3DC Tolitegova, this is very helpful. Um, we used to adjust the lamivudine dose when the GFR was under 50. You only need to adjust the lamivudine dose if the GFR is under 30. So there's a lovely a back of a 3DC Dolivegova tablet. It's a one tablet a day. So if you've got somebody where their GFR has dropped to 45 and you have to change it to an off of her to a back of her, for example, you can have the one tablet right down to a GFR of 30, which is very useful as long as they weigh more than 25 kilograms. Children who's more than 20 kilograms, we use the dolly take of a 50 milligrams per day um, tablet. If they, or that's, I assume that's under 20 kilograms, apologies. Um, but there's now also a 30 milligrams dispersible tablet. And just use your, your um, dosing charts because your 30 milligram and your 50 milligram dispersible tablet is not interchangeable. Um, but the 30 milligram dispersible is very nice. You can put it in some, some water for your kids. So for art and TB treatment, we're now going to use TLD as our first choice, and you can have some extra Dolly Tegover. If there's some weird reason why you don't want to give them double dose dosing, then efavirenz is still an option. But I don't even know if we're going to be able to find efavirenz. The good old TEE is probably not even around anymore in a lot of our pharmacies. More importantly is to know when we switch ARVs. And luckily for you guys, that's becoming less and less of a question. We really have very few patients who hasn't already been switched onto the correct regimen. Um, in the last year, we've pretty much switched everybody. There's two scenarios. There are scenarios of patients who come in, doesn't matter what their viral load is, doesn't matter what's happened in the past, and you can just switch them. We're going to look at those quickly. And then there are those where the viral load makes a difference in terms of what you're going to do with the switching. So most patients are going to be switched to TLD. If you can't use TLD, then we use a Abacava. So we're no longer using um, Zodovidine. It's only if the Abacava can't be used. Remember those hypersensitivities I talked about? Then in those scenarios, we might still have to use the Zodovidine, which is not great. If for any reason you are using a PI, we're going to use the Atazanova Ritonova, and please never use Navarapin, although I don't think you can find... Well, you can still find a Varapin for the babies for the PMTCT program. Now you've got a patient who's got hepatitis B and renal dysfunction. So remember we talked about you can't use lamivudine for those patients. So what do you now do if somebody qualifies for a back of a 3TC Dolly Tegover because their GFR is under 50? But if you're going to give them lamivudine, they're going to get, um, they're going to become resistant. So the first option is, um, and that actually is mentioned in the guidelines. So eventually I think we'll have that available in the pack. public sector is actually to have TAF available. So um, the TAF 3TC Dolly Tegover combination can be used right down to a GFR of 15. And you can, there's a one tablet available um, for a GFR between 30 and 50. If the renal failure is not due to tenofovir nephrotoxicity, 
then there's also the option of actually still using your tenofovir, but there's a, and we don't unfortunately have smaller dosages of the 300 milligrams. So you give like every second day or every third day, depending on your GFR. So this is what we're doing in our setting. But also you can only do that if it's not the tenofovir that's caused the problem. So say you've got a patient with diabetes or hypertension that's causing their renal failure. They've also got hepatitis B positive. Then this might be the kinds of regimens um, that you will use. Patients that you can just simply switch no matter what the viral load results is. You're still obviously going to check your viral load and deal with it. Um, but basically anybody who's still on an efavirenz or an avirapine regimen who was on the old first line can go on to TLD1. We had our previous second line was azt 3 tc Dolitegava. Remember I said the Darnadia trial said it works better. So those can all go on to TLD2. And if you've got patients who's on AZT3TC lupinavaritonavir or AZT3TC atazanavaritonavir, so these are all the patients who also are old, old second line, and they've been on it for less than two years, it's very difficult to get resistant to this regimen, they can all go into TLD2. And as I said, they should all be switched already, hopefully. But you sometimes have scenarios where uh, we're a little bit worried. And the only scenarios where we're a little bit worried is where patients are on lupinavaritonavir or atazanavaritonavir for longer than two years. So if they've had a viral load for more than a thousand, two times after they've been on treatment for more than two years, so they've actually been failing for more than two years on this regimen, we're getting a little bit worried. Um, and so at this point, if you've only got one viral load, you'll take another viral load, um, but we're now getting concerned. So. The reason why this is an issue is that if you've got somebody who's got resistance to lupinavaritonavir, they might have crossed resistance to darunavaritonavir. And therefore, if you put them on TLD2, they might have no third line regimen if they ever fail on TLD2. It's all very abstract and theoretical. But in theory, in those patients, the third line committee needs to decide, are we going to boost their TLD with extra darunavir or not? So I'm going to put make it simple in a minute. So the way it works is that Anybody who's been on azt 3 tc lupinavaritonavir or atazanavaritonavir for more than two years, you've got to do a viral load. If the viral load is LDL or is consistently under 1,000, we can put them onto TLD2. If you've got a patient who is, viral load is over 1,000, two times um, three months apart, but they're not taking their treatment, we're going to make an assumption the adherence is poor, this is what's causing that high viral load, and we're going to put them on TLD2. Okay, so, um, and because it's better to have them on a nice simple regimen, and remember you can't do a genotype if they're not actually taking their treatment well at the time, you're not gonna be able to see what's actually going on. So all of those patients we can switch. And when we talk about good adherence, we talk about, are they coming to their visits, to their refills? Can you objectively, don't go on what they're self-reporting. Do you have objective evidence that they're not taking their treatment? This is the funny scenario, and this is the only scenario where we're going to start doing genotypes. So being on a lupinavaritonavir, a tizanavaritonavir regimen for more than two years, two viral loads over a thousand, good adherence. So now we're very worried, is there um, a poss possible resistance to that lupinavaritonavir? So we do a genotype, and this is the three that we've picked up in our clinic with all patients like that. Um, and then those patients, we will actually refer them with their genotype. If they've got lupinavaritonavir or atazanavaritonavir resistance, that goes to the third line committee, who will then decide, depending on all of the mix of mutations, what regimen we're going to give um, those patients. And then we'll obviously see how they do on that treatment. I know that seems very, that's a lot. Um, there's a nice, I'll send you guys a nice little um, summary as well in terms of switching of, of regimens that goes into a little bit